Ilham Toti is an economics professor, first and foremost, at a very prestigious university in Beijing. He's ethnically a Uyghur uh, and very proud of it. He's a member of Uyghur Pen. It's an independent Chinese pen that advocates for Uyghur language and cultural rights. He's also a public intellectual, and he is the foremost Uyghur public intellectual in the People's Republic of China. His aspiration was to see the full rights to free expression, to cultural expression, guaranteed for the Uyghurs. The Uyghurs feel that they are looked down upon, that they're discriminated against. A lot of students love him and like people, the students like to listen to his class. A lot of students from other school, like they took two hours buses to come to my father's class because my, my father's class is like open to everyone. A number of years ago, he started Uyghur Online, which he intended to act as a sort of bridge in which debate could take place between Han Chinese and Uyghurs in a peaceful, rational, reasonable way. That's really the thing that I think irked the Chinese government the most and they, they saw as a threat. Purposefully created this blog, which is in Chinese, in order that Chinese people could read about what was going on in Xinjiang and how Uyghur people felt. And it was really meant to be a, a forum between the Uyghurs and Chinese as much as anything else. Um, he was interested in dialogue, and his website was uh, centered around that. But of course, the most important thing is to bring uh, before a Chinese readership the feelings of Uyghurs, uh, because the vast majority of people in the People's Republic of China, the Chinese majority, knows how they feel, or they know what the party line is, I should say, but what they're not exposed to is uh, the feelings and the sentiments and the perspective of Uyghurs. And so he wanted to create a space in which it was possible for Chinese readers uh, to have access to this. In July of 2009, there were clashes, violent clashes in Xinjiang. The people who disappeared, Ilham kept asking where they were. He put names and faces on these people. And I can tell you, Ilham is not a naive person. He knew that by engaging in such activities, he was placing himself in danger. Actually, 但是到目前为止虽然经历了很多压力as you know, the Vigor biz launched in 2006, and after only just two years, in um, 2008, it was first shut down, first closed down by the authority, Chinese authority. And then again, in uh, March 2009, the Vigor biz website closed down because of um, what has happened in Urumqi in July 5, the Urumqi massacre happened in 2009. And after that massacre, uh, the Vigor Biz website again completely shut down. And um, uh, this happened within China, so it's kind of uh, indication that it was impossible for Ilham Tohti to continue um, his advocacy through this uh, Vigor Biz website. And um, in 2009, uh, 2010, I'm sorry, the Vigor Biz website uh, so uh, forced to move to overseas. But as we know, since it has been operated in overseas, uh, it was constantly faced attack by the Chinese authorities. And at the end, in um, 2014, January 2014, it was completely just taken down. This past spring, uh, our website uh, translated a long essay by 
uh, Ilham Toti. Um, it is written in 2011, and it is a response to a uh, uh, request uh, by a uh, high-level uh, party official in Beijing, and named. The request was related to Ilham uh, by the uh, security police who were watching him. The essay um, uh, examined um, the uh, you know social, economical, uh, political, religious aspects of a Uyghur life in Xinjiang. Um, analyzed the, the causes, the underlying causes of uh, um, ethnic uh, strife, and uh, provided uh, uh, solutions, policy recommendations to reduce strife and to uh, safeguard the basic rights of a Uyghur people. Um, at the time uh, when this was written, uh, Eliham was actually uh, under house arrest. So when I edited the essay line by line, um, of course the recommendations he made, uh, I mean to my ear, were sound, good uh, recommendations. But beyond the words, what struck me uh, was the, the clarity reason and dignity of the author. Um, I, I remember myself thinking uh, only a truly free mind can think and write like this. Uh, free to think, free to speak uh, what you believe to be right. Xinjiang, we were to 过去的十年生活在相对空虚的状态他怕说话他担心就是可能被属于逮捕这种压力是直接的比方说不断的查维沃族的房子或住的酒店那么而且逼这些酒店或这个房东先去腾出房子不要给新疆人租房子新疆的
现在在新疆很多村庄，一村一井，一井一户嘛。这是张春贤去了之后的政策，也就是说一个村一个警察所，然后一个警察负责一个户。政府然后拼了大量的一些一些失业的、社会上的一些，甚至是不良青年，那么一个月可能是八百块钱、六百块钱，然后这些人组成的，也有警察，有的时候也有特警。那么这种模式，我觉得。别的不说，有人随便闯进我家，我绝对不接受。其实，在新疆一直有一种倾向，反恐问题扩大化，以反恐的名义掩盖其他矛盾，包括地方政府自己的无能，包括维稳部门的无能，它转移矛盾。其实，新疆的主要矛盾，并不是反恐问题，也不是恐怖主义问题，新疆的主要矛盾是权力问题。权力的不平等，权力被这些极端利益集团控制和垄断，而这种权力资源的垄断，通过这个，它垄断了各种发展的资源，包括社会资源。那么，所以我很担心，政府这个时候不反思自己的问题，为什么这样，而是还在强调反恐，而且。把这个问题通过国际的角度，上海合作组织，我很担心这个恶化维吾尔人将来的处境，也恶化政府和维吾尔组织间的关系。我不认为政府再增加军力、武力、维稳的力量，能够保证他不受到公共场所，包括政府目标，他不能保证受到袭击。这个袭击不一定来自维吾尔族。对不对？关键的问题是政府得要反思、反省，跟老百姓，无论是维吾尔族还是汉族，怎么样打交道，怎么样尊重老百姓，要尊重民意，尊重这个时代发展的潮流。而且我在新疆看到的是什么？他越压制宗教，那么维吾尔人越来越保护自己的宗教，用一种被动的方式防御。他越不让维吾尔留胡子，维吾尔就留胡子；越不让维吾尔戴头巾，他就戴头巾；越不让维吾尔族用自己的语言，维吾尔族越重视自己的语言。那么，政府应该做的是什么？不是压压再高压，而要做的是，要首先对自己动手术，治理好自己。治理不好自己，他治理不好这个国家；治理不好自己。不能改变，要是他改变不了对待维吾尔人的方式，跟他相处的方式，不尊重他的法律的权利，包括民族自治的权利，那么维吾尔族和政府之间的矛盾越来越突出。而且我相信，其实零九年我被牵连，就是被软禁，呃，被处理的时候，我警告过政府，将来维吾尔族零星的抗议时间，可能形成一种运动，抗议的运动。这也许是过去的六十年你没有见到的。你们将来会面对一个越来越团结的一个维吾尔人。那么，我现在也是大胆的预测：，要是政府不改变对新疆的政策，那么越来越多的维吾尔人可能选择跟政府对抗的方式来表达自己的诉求。就认为，呃，一个民族某一个阶段啊，这个并且这个国家的环境以言论获罪，因为办了媒体获罪，因为说真话获罪，对不对？我愿意，我觉得是很荣耀的事情，对吧？嗯。而且真的那个时候出现的话，我以前就说过，用我必为的生命呼唤自由，这是幸福的事情，骄傲的事情。我唯一的牵挂就是母亲和孩子嘛。要是判死刑，我有心理准备。这个也许我们民族的人付出的代价吧，对吧？我也得毫不付出代价的话，可能虽然把我送进去，可能更多的引起对我国民族的关注，可能引起更多的思考。然后最担心就是孩子，对吧？我怕
他们做到不坏，因为他们已经做到不坏。为什么？他没有去受伤，对吧？旁听说，我怕哎，你说旁听说我没有了，你说小孩很茫然，不知道。然后还有一个担心，现在的这个有孩子了，对吧？嗯，然后他是没有工作，将来回新疆不可能有工作，就是我将来的孩子，我妈妈也老了，我就担心我将来两个孩子。但可能很残忍的，虽然担心，明白吧？但是我觉得，这个也许能付，就是有没有办法付出的代价吧。虽然你不愿意，对吧？我虽然有各种各样的信息，有各种各样的预感，我还是不敢相信，这个国家真的把我没有危害性的，我真的弄成这样，有时候也怀疑。那么我那么多年，其实，在生活在危险之中。那么他们在监视、监控，一直跟踪。尤其是他们今年给我加强了这种监控的力度，二十四个小时，在我家的小区门口，就是最少的时候放着两个车、四个国宝或国安。那么。从三月份到七月份，我四次在这个家被软禁，就是连这个门都不让出，而且全家。那么这些东西我习惯了，觉得是生活的一部分，我应该承担，应该面对的。但是我万万没有想到，他们的这种法西斯和流氓的做法，甚至对着一个无辜的、没有成年的儿童、孩子。那天我是从东门出来。准备接我妈，她来北京看病。那么我们已经发现这个车跟着，然后我犹豫了一下，想怎么回事我准备下车，这个时候，他就过来，很脏很脏的话。说实话，我是八五年从我老家来北京，那么我《三国演义》都看过，都能看得懂。我周边百分之九十九的朋友是汉人，我也知道一些骂人的话，听过，但他那么骂人，那么脏的，那么下流的，我说不出口，不断的骂，我说别骂人，你装车还有理了。然后他说你心里清清楚，为什么装你？我说我不清楚啊。他说你在媒体上你就装逼吧你，你在媒体上说说什么说了那么多，我会想装死你。然后这个时候说，车里面小孩你不知道吗？他装死你全家，然后装你全家，然后他还是用杀你全家，而且他像疯了一样不断的重复这个话。我前天还写了遗嘱，因为他们要杀我，而且警察那个那个不处理嘛，我就遗嘱给我爱人，然后给我的这个一个一个很亲的人说，一旦我出问题，公布。呃，我说，哪怕是我被国宝或者国安杀死，不要以为是汉族人杀死我，不要把这个仇恨两个人的中间，要发布出去我的这种观点，因为我有很多写的没有发布的几十万字的东西，呃，应该认为这个体制杀了我，而不是汉人，因为我真的很担心。现在当局转移矛盾，新疆的尤其是，啊、呃，还有一些他可能不是故意的，他的做法，他的宣传的方式，他对一个问题的对待的方式，最终导致的是两个民族的误解，两个民族的矛盾。我最不愿意看到的。我不是暴力的，我没有违法的任何事情，只不过我真的努力想发表一些声音，我不喜欢暴力。我不会提倡暴力。我并不认为汉民族是我们敌人，哪怕在这两个民族仇恨、仇杀发生的时候，甚至发生民族屠杀的时候，我也会呼吁汉民族应该是我们的朋友，我也会说出我们应该成为你的朋友，不是敌人。
public security, state security, burst into his apartment. In front of his children, they dragged him away. I saw the news. Your father is arrested now. I couldn't move at all. I forgot how to think. I forgot how to talk. My brothers were really scared. My brother described that they, he, he was crying, said they beat my father. They just arrested him and confiscated everything. Ilham Toti's arrest was very much an arrest foretold by him. He anticipated that this might happen, so much so that he left a statement behind to be read and published in the event of his arrest. A court in northwest China's Xinjiang region has found a prominent Uyghur scholar guilty of separatism and sentenced him to life in prison. Ilham Toti has resolutely denied the charges and vowed to appeal. Toti's wife, Guzelnur, was in the courtroom for the two-day trial. She told RFA that she was deeply saddened and disappointed by the verdict. Uh, Zhao 通过后来跟他的交往这是一个非常荒谬的东西，它因为是中国唯一一个中国内陆，就中国国内唯一的一个拥有话语权和影响力的维吾尔人，它是户籍是在北京的，所以当局非常的愤怒，他们不希望维吾尔人有任何可以发
all the Uyghur people. And uh, Uyghurs believe that we are facing an existential threat. After Ilham Tohti has been arrested and sentenced by Chinese government uh, for life sentence, and his students also has been arrested. Um, so far we knew that um, his eight of his students had been arrested. And until today, we don't know whereabouts of uh, those students and what is their condition wherever they have, have been kept in China. Because if Chinese government current policies continue for another two or three decades, the Uyghur people may not exist as Uyghur people anymore. They may be forcibly assimilated. For the Uyghurs, they have two choices. One is to embrace uh, China's cultural assimilation policies, become a Chinese or a Han person, just look different. Uh, the second is to resist. Uh, resist, uh, then, uh, then they have to go to jail, uh, get in prison, of course, sentenced to life or even death, in, like uh, Professor Ilham Tohti. The situation is very dire. Uyghurs feeling like they are breathing their last breath under China's communist rule. Uh, of the Uyghur people, but until and unless Chinese government embraces political reform, uh, democratic reform rather, and respect the rights, human rights of all people under its rule, and uh, grants genuine freedom to all people, and respects China's constitution and uh, China's uh, regional ethnic autonomy law, uh, which were you know, granted to the Uyghurs, Tibetans, Mongolians, and others, and the things would be not just bad for the Uyghur people in general, for the Tibetans, Mongols, for the 1.4 billion Chinese people as well. His father was uh, um, the uh, first generation Uyghurs going to college inside China and uh, went back to Xinjiang to work. And uh, his father died during the Cultural Revolution at the age of 28, when Ilham was only two years old and his brother was only 11 months old. So to this day, he wrote uh, in his essay, My Ideals and uh, the Career Path I ch Have Chosen, he said uh, he doesn't know what happened to his dad, how his dad died during the Cultural Revolution. Now, of course, we know that uh, um, Ilham himself was also educated in um, China, in the mainland China, and uh, uh, is uh, um, sort of like his father. When you put uh, uh, the two side by side, uh, the fate of the father and the fate of the son, and they both suffered the senseless tragedy and the absurdity and 40 years apart. And you have to ask yourself, how could the things have gone wrong, so wrong, for so long? My father, Ilham Tohti has used only one weapon in his struggle for the basic rights of Uyghur of Xinjiang. Words. Spoken, written, distributed, and posted. This is all that he has ever had at his disposal, and all that he has ever needed. And this is what China finds so threatening. Locations may differ, countries and societies might, may differ, but the fear of free thoughts and the, of the power of words still sadly tortures the minds of so many of those who rule. Well, the Chinese were not happy when they heard we decided to give this award to Ilham Todi. They issued a potent statement saying that we were giving this award to a criminal, that we were interfering with the Chinese judicial process. Clearly, this has gotten under their skin. The more attention there is to this case, the greater the chance that the Chinese government will step back from the worst. He's been arrested numerous times before, and yet he's continued. And it's that kind of astonishing courage that we salute with this award. The sentencing of uh, Ilham Toti um, 
has provoked a very wide and strong responses across the the world. Um, we have, uh, um, you know, governments, uh, major human rights organizations, and we also have uh, organizations from uh, um, uh, journalists, academics, and writers. Um, EU alone. Uh, European Union alone issued um, three statements uh, when he was uh, uh, arrested, when he was indicted, and when he was sentenced. And of course we have a... Ilham Tokti, like other dissidents in the People's Republic of China, must not be forgotten. Yiri 共同存在这个大家庭中，这也是伊里哈木的理想。我想最能帮助伊里哈木的，就是去维护他的这个理想。Bundan başka beraberlik ne? Meyli ayrım insan olsun, meyli millet ve medeniyet olsun, din olsun, uygurlukken müstahak bir beraberlik ne? Telafi geldim, yok uykunut ne? Her taliyet ne telafi geldim? Benim başka zorabalık çıka grupta benim katlaşmam yok. Bu bir. Hem işkence ben cumhurda bir teşkilat kurgunum yok. لیکن من اطرافم دا هرکدتن من قلای درام میل خان دا بوسون اورلا بوسون آورده بودن چون گویی که مدت هلک یامان سوی نخست دا پایلانس بوم میده دا امدا بودن تلاش کرد پشت کوک کارنو کوک آبتون میاد کوک برابر دی کوک ده بر اقلیت تلاش کرد بودن چون گویی که مدت خان دادم بر انسان دو بزرگان بیشتر نتلاش کرد بودن که من از من منگویی کنخس دب اویلایم مشنای من در کنم دب پیش نه مزور دب بزن دم در میربان bridge in which debate could take place between Han Chinese and Uyghurs in a peaceful, rational, reasonable way. That's really the thing that I think irked the Chinese government the most and they, they saw as a threat. Purposefully created this blog which is in Chinese in order that Chinese people could read about what was going on in Xinjiang and how Uyghur people felt. And it was really meant to be a, a forum between Uyghurs and Chinese as much as anything else. Um, he was interested in dialogue. And his website was... Uh, Asking where they were. He put names and faces on these people. And I can tell you, Ilham is not a naive person. He knew that by engaging in such activities, he was placing himself in danger. Actually, Ilham Toti is an economics professor, first and foremost, at a very prestigious university in Beijing. He's ethnically a Uyghur uh, and very proud of it. He's a member of Uyghur Pen. It's an independent Chinese pen that advocates for Uyghur language and cultural rights. He's also a public intellectual, and he is the foremost Uyghur public intellectual in the People's Republic of China. His aspiration was to see the full rights to free expression, to cultural expression, guaranteed for the Uyghurs. The Uyghurs feel that they are looked down upon, that they're discriminated against. 
a lot of students love him and like people the students likes to listen to his class a lot of students from other school like they took two hours buses to come to my father's class because my my father's class is like open to everyone a number of years ago he started Uyghur online which he intended to act as uh, centered around that but of course the most important thing is to bring uh, before a Chinese readership the feelings of Uyghurs uh, because the vast majority of people in the People's Republic of China, the Chinese majority, knows how they feel or they know what the party line is, I should say, but what they're not exposed to is uh, the feelings and the sentiments and the perspective of Uyghurs. And so he wanted to create a space in which it was possible for Chinese readers uh, to have access to this. In July of 2009, there were clashes, violent clashes in Xinjiang. The people who disappeared, Ilhan kept...